Every 30 seconds, another person has a leg amputated due to foot wounds, which are easily prevented with timely and appropriate care. Feet play a very important role in everyone's daily life. Feet are a person's natural vehicle, enabling us to go anywhere we wish. How well are we taking care of this most precious means of transportation? Unlike cars that can travel only on streets, feet can take us everywhere, even down narrow lanes. While cars are replaceable, no one wishes to acquire new feet every few years. While a new car will run better than an old one, new feet can never be as good as those we received at birth. Each foot is composed of 26 small bones, which are connected through a network of muscles and tendons. This fine mechanism is then covered with skin. Nature designed the skin on the soles of our feet to be strong and thick, able to tolerate harsh rubbing and scratching. Internally, muscle-covered fascia are effectively safeguarded with a layer of fat. As a result, our feet are not only strong, but also very flexible and able to carry our body weight all day long, whether standing, walking, or running. When we walk, the weight-bearing point begins at the heels and moves to the front of the foot. The final weight-bearing point of each step is located at the tips of the five toes. The two most common causes of chronic foot wounds that lead to foot amputations are 1. Deterioration of peripheral nerves, causing numbness and loss of protective sensation. 2. Deterioration of the vessels, causing insufficient blood flow to the feet. Deterioration of peripheral nerves destroys the natural warning system, causing numbness and loss of protective sensation. When sharp objects cut the feet, little or no feeling is experienced. Only after the feet become infected, swollen, red, and feverish are the wounds even noticed. By that time, it's much too late for simple treatment. People with deterioration of peripheral nerves must learn how to take proper care of their feet. They must practice strict foot care to prevent wounds. Proper foot care simply means wearing appropriate socks and shoes to protect the feet at all times and avoiding going barefoot. It's important to monitor any abnormalities in the feet regularly. If you noticed even the smallest wound, take care of it immediately. Early treatment is crucial for optimum healing and avoiding amputation. People with diabetes should have their feet screened for peripheral nerve status by a diabetes care team at least once every year. If the autonomic nerves that control the sweat glands are damaged, moisture on the feet cannot be maintained and the skin will dry out. Dry skin is prone to inflammation. Cracks may appear along with flakes of skin. The feet may take on a shiny and smooth appearance along with loss of hair. These symptoms can be alleviated to reduce foot problems by applying lotion on the feet daily to keep the skin moist. If the peripheral nerves that control muscles in the feet deteriorate, the foot muscles will atrophy. The muscles will become weak, causing changes in the weight-bearing points. Changes in the weight-bearing points lead to calluses and foot wounds. Atrophy of the vessels that supply blood flow to the tissues in the feet coupled with limitations to the flow of healing nutrients, lead to wounds that can be increasingly difficult to heal. Moreover, if wounds inflame, they're even more complicated and costly to treat. Those who suffer from diabetes are prone to ingrown toenails. For those with normal sensitivity in the feet, the pain of ingrown toenails is intense. This pain is an important warning sign to take corrective measures. 
but for people with loss of protective sensations in the feet, no pain can be detected. If not treated promptly and properly, the problem may become aggravated, resulting in the loss of toes or even of the whole leg in extreme cases. Toenails should be trimmed immediately after taking a shower when the nails are soft and easy to trim. You should not soak your feet in water because the skin may become flaky and open to germs. People with diabetes should clean their feet only in the shower, being sure to dry them well, especially between the toes to prevent dampness and fungus. The correct technique for trimming nails is to trim in a straight line level with the ends of the toes. This allows toenails to protect the toes from kicking objects. Don't cut the toenails too short and don't curve down at the edges. Because when toenails grow longer they might become ingrown and cause inflammation. When trimming the nails, trim in a straight line. Then use a nail file for finer work. Slowly file the nails to smooth out any sharp edges. Do not use the entire width of the nail clipper to cut your nails because those with fragile nails or with fungus may experience cracks that could cut into the skin beneath the nails. The preferred approach is to use your nail clipper little by little to trim your nails from one end to another. An appropriate nail clipper should have a straight edge because it's more convenient and can reduce the chance of inappropriate trimming. It's important to visit a foot care specialist immediately in case you experience ingrown toenails due to a change in the shape of the nails, or the edge of the nails become curvy and grow into the toes, and you are not able to trim with a regular nail clipper. A foot care specialist uses a special file which gets into the space between the nail and the toe. The edge of the nail is gently lifted and the curving nail is carefully removed using a special clipper. This way the edge of the nails is trimmed in a straight line. No sharp edges are left remaining to cause further damage to the toe and recurrence of ingrown toenails. Another common cause of foot wounds is thick calluses on the soles of the feet. Calluses can occur due to abnormality in weight-bearing points, from the bones that put pressure on weight-bearing areas, or from abrasion between feet and shoes that occurs with inappropriate shoes such as those with narrow toe boxes. Walking with calluses feels like stepping on hard sheets that get thicker and thicker, eventually causing wounds. Therefore, it's important to check your feet thoroughly and observe for the formation of calluses. Do not use a nail clipper, blade, or any sharp tool to remove a callus. Do not scratch or pull it out using your fingernails because this can also cause wounds. If a callus is not too thick, use an abrasive stone or a household scrubbing pad and rub lightly on the callus after your shower. Then, dry your feet well, apply lotion, and massage the callus gently. Doing this daily can reduce the thickness of the callus. Seek professional foot care if you have a callus that is already thick and cannot be easily rubbed off. If you have a callus that has red, black, or bruised color underneath the skin, this indicates a wound beneath the surface. Again, you should visit your foot care specialist for proper treatment and prevention of repeated weight bearing on that location. The goal is to heal and prevent recurrence of wounds. foot care specialist can soften a thick callus by soaking cotton sheets on the calloused area for 5 to 10 minutes. Then using a surgical blade to gradually trim the callus until the area is nearly as soft as the surrounding area. 
If wounds are discovered beneath the callus, consult with a specialist for proper treatment and to prevent recurrence of the wound. Several instruments can help reduce weight bearing on the feet to enhance the healing of wounds. A walker is suitable for people who need high stability or need to reduce the weight bearing load on their feet. A walker is appropriate for those with large wounds because it has the widest weight bearing base. Apply strength from both arms onto the two handles simultaneously to reduce the pressure on foot wounds. Even better, pressure can be entirely removed by not stepping on the wound at all. The limitation of a walker is that it's not convenient when moving in narrow spaces or on stairs. Axillary crutches are the second most appropriate tool for reducing the weight load on foot wounds. Crutches have less weight bearing area than walkers. They are therefore more convenient for walking on stairs and in narrow spaces. Apply strength from both arms simultaneously on the crutches to reduce pressure on the foot wounds. Be careful to not lean forward using the underarm for balance because this may damage the nerves under the arms, leading to weakening of the arm muscles. A cane is appropriate for cases that require a minimal reduction in pressure on the foot, such as with small wounds. Hold the cane with your arm opposite the wounded foot. Apply your weight onto the cane handle and simultaneously take a step forward with your wounded foot. This alleviates the weight load on the wound. Here are 10 easy ways to care for your feet by yourself. 1. Check your feet every day. If a sensation problem occurs, you may not feel the pain and may fail to detect abnormalities at an early stage. If you have a flexibility problem or cannot bend down to look at your feet, use a mirror to observe your soles. If necessary, ask your caretakers to assist you. Two. In the case of wounds, wash your feet while taking a shower. Use mild soap to clean your feet thoroughly and rinse them well. Use a towel to dry them, paying special attention between the toes and on the surface of the nails. Protect any wounds by keeping them away from water. Use a plastic bag to cover your feet or elevate your wounded foot while showering. Three, after taking a shower and drying your feet well, moisturize the skin with an emollient such as lanolin or hand lotion on the soles of your feet, the top of your feet, and your legs. Avoid applying lotion on the nails and between the toes to avoid dampness and fungus. Four, select appropriate socks and shoes. Socks should be made of soft cotton because it allows better airflow than nylon. Socks should not be too tight in the ankles because this can cause insufficient blood flow to the feet. Select shoes that are appropriate for each activity. Always wear sneakers when exercising. Choose shoes with back straps instead of wearing sandals, especially if you already experience numbness in your feet. Back straps assure that your shoes cannot slip off easily without your awareness. People with numbness in their feet should never walk barefoot. Wear shoes to protect your feet at all times. 5. Always check inside your shoes for rocks, gravel, insects, or any other object before putting them on. 6. Avoid soaking your feet in water to prevent flaking of the skin. This can lead to infections or wounds if the water is too hot. 7. Soaking your feet in warm water may cause deterioration of peripheral nerves and blood vessels. It will not help to remove numbness. 7. As soon as a wound is observed, consult a foot care specialist. 
delay in treatment of just a few days can cause significant healing complications, a significant increase in expenses, and a significant increase in the possibility of toe, foot, or leg amputations. 8. Trim your toenails correctly in a straight line, level with the tips of your toes. Do not trim them too short or curve at the edges. 9. Exercise your foot muscles regularly to enhance their strength and reduce the chance of foot deformity. 10. Quit smoking. Smoking contributes to blood vessel deterioration. Everyone, including people with diabetes, who have already experienced loss of protective sensation or deterioration of peripheral nerves in the feet, can achieve perfect foot health by taking these 10 simple steps.